Okay, well, we're getting towards the end of the program here. A very exciting day after a very exciting three days. Hope you're having as good a time as I am, or maybe even better. I hope you're as tired as I am, or maybe even tireder. And I hope you're as energized as I am, or maybe even energizeder. To, uh, to continue on for the rest of the day. Got some uh, closing ceremonies coming up in a couple hours. Got a couple talks between now and then. A reminder to please remove your trash from the rooms. We'll actually do a cleanup later on together, a group exercise as part of the, um, part of the community process here. Yeah, I probably want to close those doors. So um, uh, yeah, please do clean up your, uh, your trash. And thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of Hope. Thanks for being a part of history. And thanks for uh, all your energy and involvement and participation. So um, let's proceed. This is uh, John Huntington. And he's going to tell about a self-publishing success story. Thank you. Check on this thing. So one thing uh, before we get started, I'm, by the end of this talk, I'm going to give away a copy of this book which is what I'm going to talk about today. It's about uh, use of networks on shows and control systems that we do for live shows. So if you're interested in that, uh, I have this high-tech uh, trip glasses box. I'm going to pass that around. Just put some, some uh, I'll trust people here. Uh, this might be a mistake. But uh, I'll trust people. Just put some name on there. It doesn't have to be your real name, but something that you can claim to me that it is. If you're interested at the end of the talk, I'll give this out. So I'll pass this around. Great, so I'm uh, John Huntington. I'm a professor of entertainment technology at City Tech here in Brooklyn. Um, so I can see it. I wrote this book, and um, I'm also a blogger at controlgeek.net, uh, and I do some consulting work. And this is actually my sixth hope, and the third one I've spoken at. Uh, the previous ones were on, one was on uh, entertainment technology, and last time uh, was on uh, weather. And it's actually related to, weather's not related to this topic, but the hope is related to this book, as I'll mention in a minute. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about how uh, the publishing industry works for trade books, not novels is sort of a different thing that I don't really know anything about, but trade publications like this. So it's a technical book, gets used as a textbook sometimes, but it's also just people are interested by it. Um, I ended up self-publishing by necessity. I'll talk about that. Talk about should you self-publish, and if you're going to do that, uh, how are you going to do it? So, um, oh, and I put in, uh, I realized when I finished this talk that it was all just boring bullet points, so I figured I'd throw some, some of my photos in just to give you some, wake people up a little bit of graphical stuff. Um, so how did I get started with this? Um, so the way a trade book uh, gets, gets written or gets published, the publisher gets a book proposal somehow. So in my case, they actually came around with a survey looking for reviewers, and I wrote in there, hey, I'd like to write a book about this. This was like 1992 or something. Um, so they could ask for it, or you could suggest, if you have an uh, idea for a book, you can go to a publisher, propose it, and uh, they might consider it. They might send it out for review to experts in that field if they don't really know it. If they see a market, they'll uh, contract for the book, and usually that's pretty much it. There's not really agents involved in this. There's not that much money that makes it worth it. Um, and usually most authors, they say certainly in my case, are excited to have the exposure. and, and, and uh, uh, this is changing a little bit, but then, again, on a, a smaller book like this, I'll give you all the sales numbers here in a little bit. Um, I never consult an agent or anything like that. I think I actually did run the thing by a friend of mine's agent. So how, I can just speak from my own experience, when you, so you get contracted for a book, how does it go from there? Sometimes they'll give you an advance against royalties, maybe 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, something like that. Um, you write the book. It always seems to take a year. Every time I've done this, it's like a year. Cause I, and I tried, the last time I wrote, I wrote on a sabbatical. So I really tried to sit down and write like 40 hours a week, and I, I just couldn't do it. So I ended up about 20 hours a week is about what I could do. Always seeing, again, it takes, it takes a year. They might pay you for some uh, production work. Uh, you should ask. You can negotiate things in these contracts. So um, you get all the graphics or make them, and you also have to get all the rights for all the graphics. They don't really do any of that stuff. Uh, typically, and for the first edition of my book, you just sub uh, submit a manuscript in Word or something like that, and then they lay it out, copy edit it, or copy edit it first, lay it out, do the graphics uh, layout and so on. And these people are very good at graphics layout, but they most likely know nothing about your topic. So if a graphic gets switched, which is obvious to you or anybody or your readers, they don't know. I mean, it's just that they don't get it. So um, that 
the first time I had this come out in the 90s, that whole process took like a year from the time I submitted the manuscript until I actually had a printed book. That sped up in the last edition of like three, four months, which is still, as you'll see, is kind of ridiculous. Then the publisher handles marketing, printing, distribution, sales, and for all that, they give you 10% of their growth. So that means if uh, it, it's not a $100 book, but just I can't do math in my head. So if you have a book that's $100, they sell it to Amazon or a bookstore for about $60, you get $6 out of that. So my book, they price somewhere around $60, $70. Typically, I would get about $3 of that, typically. So I did three editions of a book the same. It's a, it's a lot of related content, but it's called Control Systems for Live Entertainment. One thing I always negotiated just because it didn't seem right to me on the contract is that I kept the copyright. So each time they would send me a contract saying they own the copyright, I would cross it out. And they accepted it. Again, you can negotiate some of this. They wouldn't negotiate any higher royalties, but that they would give up. Um, so I proposed a fourth edition. The whole market, in you know, our market changes a lot, and a lot of networking stuff came in. Uh, I just went to this router talk. It was very interesting for that. Um, and they were like, yeah, great idea. So let's do it. I scheduled a sabbatical. I'm a college professor, so I was due for a sabbatical. Scheduled it. Then we get a little closer to the time where I need to, I need to start writing. They're like, well, we don't know, maybe not. And started giving me the runaround. So, um, and then they also complained about the sales, but on the third edition, they really did nothing to market it. It had some momentum on its own, and uh, they just kind of did nothing for it, So, which is a, a theme a lot, especially with this publisher. I try not to name them in the talk. So eventually, I just realized they weren't going to go for it. So I was depressed about this for like a day. I'm like, oh, they don't want my book. And, um, and then I realized, you know, hey, with self-publishing, you can do all this stuff yourself now. So just a bunch of Googling around, I realized there was uh, ways to do this. Create Space is the one I ended up using, owned by Amazon. Um, and then I, I basically uh, just asked them nicely, said, okay, if you know, it took me, took me a while to get them to say they're not going to do it, at least not now. And then once they said that, then I said, well, okay, we give me the rights back, and they said, sure. So I had to wait a couple months for their lawyer to get around to it or whatever, but then I eventually got a uh, letter back releasing it. So I was going to probably do something anyway, but I probably would have had to rewrite it in some way or something like that, but they just gave it back. Obviously, they're not interested in publishing it, so you know, why just have a dead book sitting on their, on their shelf? Um, and they, they're very nice people. You know, this whole thing is not it's just for them. It didn't seem worth it. So I said, okay, my process here is just to keep the book alive. You know, I'd spent years working on this thing. I'd done three editions. The market had changed a lot. Excuse me. Um, and I just want to make back whatever expenses I had and kind of keep the thing alive. That's all I was shooting for. And the whole process has really been great as I'll go through this whole thing. So the printed version uh, was on July 3rd, 2012. So I was actually, I got it like a couple days before the last HOPE conference. Um, and uh, I'll talk about that. And that all happens very, very quickly when you get it going. Um, I really wanted, so that, and I'll talk more about this, but I really wanted to have a DRM-free PDF, uh, Digital Rights Manager. I didn't want any of that, but I couldn't find out anybody that would do that as a service back in 2012. Googling around, researching for this talk, actually there is a company now, so I'm probably going to look into that when I get some time. So instead I did an ebook on Kindle that came out in January. It took me a little while just to get caught up and figure out that whole process, which I'll talk about. So that's just sort of an overview of the whole uh, process that we go through for them. So the way I started is I have a blog that, amazingly to me, gets about 28,000 uh, unique visitors a year. I can't imagine why people are that interested in the stuff I write, but I write it because it's fun, it's interesting to me. Um, and some of the things are targeted to the industry. Sometimes I'll just put storm chasing pictures up, stuff like that. But uh, So I get a, a reasonable amount of readership on the blog. Um, so I wrote a survey, just using SurveyMonkey free tool, um, to find out how much people would pay, because I have an audience for the book. Each, each edition had sold a few thousand copies before. So I wanted to know how much people would pay, because obviously you want to set that, and also what format they wanted. So again, this is from 2012. Things might have changed a little bit, but I really don't think so, as I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, I, I publicized on a bunch of uh, email lists and forums and so on. Had 123 people respond, which is a decent sample size for, for what it is. Um, and actually, I wrote a summary blog entry of this and sent it to Boing Boing and I actually published it, which was pretty cool. Um, so the results, in, again, 2012, only 13.9% wanted, preferred the ebook. I said, which would you grab? You can only have one, which, which would you have? 14% said they wanted an ebook. And I agree with that myself for technical books, because if you look through this thing, uh, every paragraph has a graphic, a picture, a diagram. 
Uh, ebook formats just really don't work very well for that. I'll talk more about that a little bit. Um, I thought, and so the old price under the publisher is like $68, something like that. I don't, I, it's funny, I actually have no record of that because I had nothing to do with sending it, they just said it. Um, so about 77% of the respondents thought that they would pay about, uh, the maximum they would pay would be about $50. So it's actually, I thought I was going to charge less than that, but I figured I'd charge 50 and that way I could discount it, which I did quite a bit of, as you'll see. Um, and then it's interesting, there's like a perceived value thing with ebooks that they really didn't uh, wanted to pay a lot less for an ebook. So like 45 or less, there's like a flip point. And I have a whole blog entry, which I'll post my website again if you're interested in this. Really pivoted right around that $50 mark that above that people were willing to pay for print and then below that uh, ebook pricing, they really wanted to drive it down. So I set it at $30 uh, for that. And I also think the ebook is, uh, it turned out okay, but it's a little bit, it's not as good of a layout and so on as the printed books. It's a little bit inferior with that. Talk about that. So production, so I wrote this in, a, in Adobe FrameMaker, which is a weird layout program. Does anybody ever use it, FrameMaker? Only oh, like one person. <laughs> so, um, I, I know that like the Ethernet standard used to be written in FrameMaker, which is like 800 pages. So it's InDesign is the product mostly used for layout of you know shorter. If you're writing a pamphlet or something is 10 or 15 pages, works pretty well. But FrameMaker is really meant to write big, heavy books, uh, and it's been around forever. It's this oddball. Every few years they think they're going to kill it, and now actually there's a whole thing where it can you can use it to generate like dynamic documents and XML and all this stuff. So it's kind of had a resurgence in technical. Uh, publishing. And if you, if you have a sort of hacker programmer background at all, there's a lot of stuff. It's very logical to a programmer. Uh, and you can, you can basically, uh, this thing is one, you know, it's, a, I don't know, 30 files or whatever, in the, but I can reflow the whole book. I can change the whole format of every heading in the book and reflow it in like a minute. Uh, and it just, and it's rock solid with that stuff. So it's a, once you learn it, like every time I go into rewriting and I have to like relearn the software, uh, but it works great. And I had already, I had negotiated because I didn't really like the, the layout that the, the uh, oh, I almost said the publisher's name, almost the, the publisher had done. It's not a secret, I just don't want to give them any press. Um, the, I didn't really like the layout they had done anyway, so I started doing it myself, and it really wasn't that hard. And they, and I, they paid me for that. They gave me like 1,500 bucks that they would have given to a uh, production person to do. So it didn't cost them any different. And then uh, long, boring arguments about format. But in the end, when I was working with the publisher, I just sent them a PDF. And uh, the final product, when I'm working with CreateSpace, I'm working, sending a PDF. It's the same thing. Uh, I hired an assistant, former student of mine, to uh, help me with the graphics, actually draw the graphics, almost all of them in there. Hired a copy editor. Um, the uh, in, in New York, I just like, put up on Facebook, like, hey, who do I know anybody who knows a copy editor? And of course, being New York, there's lots of publishing people. Uh, so a friend of a friend did it, she did a fantastic job. Uh, I also hired a cover designer, who I think did a great job, and she actually is a, uh, works in the book publishing industry in New York, and so she wanted to get some side work. Uh, and, I, and she took a bunch of pictures of mine and, and did a great job with it. Had to buy the ISBN number, that's a little confusing. Um, I, you could do a whole talk on that, it would be really boring. But the, um, in CreateSpace, there's like several options they give you depending on the type of distrib distribution. But in the end, it's like 100 bucks. I'll go over all those costs. And then um, when I did all this, it was like, wasn't quite a year this time, but it was a long time. And you know, meticulously go through it and all that. And I had to enter all the copy editing corrections myself. But that's actually not a bad process to go through it. Well, it gets kind of demoralizing, like, oh, I really do screw up that comma like every time. You have to enter that 300 times in the, in the book. Um, and then literally I sent the PDF in and like within a week I had a printed copy, uh, which is kind of amazing. So uh, it's really much, much faster than uh, being under the publisher. So ebooks, uh, as I said, they really are terrible for graphics content. There was a bunch of proprietary formats around this couple years ago, but right when I was making the decision there was a whole brouhaha because Apple would not publish an ebook because it actually linked to Amazon, so they wouldn't do it. And I'm like, I don't want anybody telling me what to do with my content. So uh, Amazon doesn't do that. They don't care. They just, they just want the money, basically. Format conversions, I, I think I blocked it out because it was so complicated. I went through my notes to try to remember what the hell I did 
to get it out of FrameMaker and into the, the Kindle format, and I honestly have no recollection how it was so torturous. But in the end, it came out okay. And I'm sure it's gotten better. It's been a couple of years. These, these tools improve a lot. Um, but yeah, you can get it. Uh, and the funny thing is, when I went on, I finally put it up on Amazon, and I accidentally bought it myself. So I, I cost myself $30 from the thing. So every time I go on the webpage now, you've already purchased this, I think. Um, talked about that. But yeah, again, it worked out pretty well. The great thing about the ebook format, it's searchable, and all the cross-references, I have lots of cross-references there where it says see chapter 12 or whatever, and FrameMaker is amazing for that stuff. All are in there dynamically, which I actually don't, I'm still having the print version. So once you have the book finished in uh, CreateSpace, we're back to the printed version, or actually all of it, um, there's several ways to distribute it. Um, CreateSpace has what they just call an e-store, which is basically a link and a web page that you enter all the content in. I like, uh, you know, upload a picture of the book and I wrote a little blurb. Uh, you have to kind of do some marketing stuff for yourself. It's hard to, uh, oh yeah, and if anybody else came in late, there's a white box over here that Aaron has. If you, you want to put in for the uh, copy of the book at the end, just put some, write your name on a, a piece of paper in there or a business card or whatever, and we'll destroy all those uh, at the end. Um, so yeah, there's an e-store, so just link from my webpage. If you go up there, I just say click here to buy the book. It takes you to CreateSpace. And then that's, it really works great because you click the link. They actually print the book on demand. So it's a big, if you search around online, just search like CreateSpace book robot. Uh, there's some similar ones posted online. It's basically just a big laser printer. The, the, everything's eight and a half by 11. They have a robot that shears it, and uh, then a color, a big laser printer for black and white, and they have a color printer for the cover, and then a binding machine. So literally, this thing goes, five minutes later, a book pops out. So there's no warehouse, and there's nothing. And if I order, I think if you order like a thousand copies or something, they'll call you up and say, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's look at this. Uh, maybe there's another technology for it. But if you buy a hundred, they're just going to line it up uh, and go. So if you order the book from there, I, all I do is I get I get money uh, uh, you know a few weeks later. I have I don't have to ship it, warehouse it, do anything. They just print it. It comes out. They do a great job shipping it, um, and then I get royalties from them, which I'll actually go through in a minute. And again, all these distribution channels are open to you. You can figure this once you release the book into CreateSpace. So um, CreateSpace uh, works great. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that. The, there's no free shipping in that like there is in Amazon, but they give you a tremendous ability to write discounts. So you can get a kind of alphanumeric code and you can uh, put that out to anybody. You can discount anything up to basically your cost of the book or 10% off or whatever. And I've used that a lot uh, as well, I'll tell, explain when we go forward. Amazon, you click a checkbox, it goes onto Amazon. Um, they sell it, they set their own price. Uh, my friend Jim and I were talking about this the other night and uh, checked and they don't actually, that doesn't come out of my royalties if they lower the price down. So they, they mess around with their end of it a little bit because uh, they're now selling it lower than I can sell it on my, I mean, I could change it. But they're, they're undercutting me through CreateSpace now and they offer free shipping. So it, most sales, as I'll show in a few minutes, go through the Amazon channel. Kindle, um, it's bizarre to me, a lot of things suck about uh, Kindle reporting. And uh, the format works fine. I think it's a very solid platform, whatever security issues or whatever aside. But uh, to get information back out of the system on my end is, is really awful. I can just to collate, to find out how many uh, ebook copies I've sold in the last two years, I had to go download individual spreadsheets for each month over the last two years and then add that myself. In CreateSpace, you just get whatever you want, download as a spreadsheet. So that back end of that is really weird. Um, and the other thing is they don't give you any ability to offer discounts except for 100%. So you get zero discount or 100%. So I actually use that, I'll explain in, in a minute. But I can't say, hey, you know, what I really wanted to do was all the people who had bought the print edition before the ebook was available, I wanted to give them a free ebook copy, and I really couldn't figure out a way to do that without manually, you know, spending a week myself. Um, oh, I should mention too, on there's one other channel in the Create Space. Um, you can't see my mouse pointer, right? The, on the CreateSpace eStore, there's a thing called expanded distribution where they sell to bookstores and things like that. I initially didn't turn that on because I kind of wanted to funnel it all through the uh, sort of more higher royalty possibilities, but eventually I turned that on and I think that's, that's worked out pretty well. Uh, and again, I, those, I can't tell where that's being sold to. I don't, if you buy the book, I, don't, I never get your name or anything. I just get, oh, a sale took place on this date. 
So the royalties, um, if we can read that right. So you set the list price, and then there's a minimum cost based on the number of pages, whether it's color, black and white, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the, the uh, uh, royalties are calculated out from that. So I set a $50 price. So on Amazon, if you buy through Amazon, I get $23.25. If you buy it on my CreateSpace eStore, they get $33.25. You buy it through that expanded distribution, like that would be like through Barnes & Noble or something, because they have to mark it up again, and Amazon wants to keep their chunk. That's $13.25. And in Europe, it's the equivalent in both pounds and euros there. So I'll do a comparison here back to what the publisher, what that cost under the publisher. Um, Kindle has a uh, two royalty options. One is uh, uh, it's like 35 percent, and the other 70. You don't the 70 percent one as I discovered is only for very low cost ebooks. So if you put up an ebook for two dollars, then you can get a 70 percent royalty, but you can't get one on a 30 dollar thing. So um, Actually, sorry, I can't read my screen here. Uh, about, it's probably bigger there. Oh yeah, ten dollars, about ten ten fifty for the ebook copy. So that's about thirty percent of that. So here's that seventy percent thing. So that's the basic thing. Once you upload a PDF to them, I ran a proof just to make sure before it's released publicly you can do that because I want to look at it. I actually changed the cover and did a few things with that. And then you click the button and it's for sale. So I mean, literally. I got the proof copy a couple of days before uh, the pre, whatever the hope number nine, and then by hope number nine you could order it online. So it's it's pretty cool. So marketing promotion, uh, obviously you have to do this yourself. And oh, I should mention too, CreateSpace does offer you the ability to uh, have them do everything. They will do the copy editing, the cover layout, all that stuff, which means they're subcontracting somebody to do it, and obviously they charge you. It's really not, the, the fees were in line with what I paid independent you know, friends of mine here in New York, so I don't know about the quality, and obviously you can't like go over and have lunch with them and, and work on it that way. So once the thing was released, I, had, I sent out about 100 copies to people who would help me because there's a lot of information in here and so every chapter I send to an expert in that area and make sure I'd rather uh, look like an idiot to them than get it out uh, published. Sorry. Did you send paper you yes. Yeah, I didn't have the ebook when I first released it. So, And then I actually bought a bunch of copies and shipped them myself and then I realized that CreateSpace's shipping is so cheap and it's, it's easier. I, now if, you, if I want to send you a copy, I just order it myself on CreateSpace and ship it out. Uh, and I'll talk more about that for like academic copies and stuff like that. They had this discount structure, so a lot of people that were involved in some way but hadn't spent you know hours reading a chapter, I sent them a discount code so they could buy you know get a deal on it. I gave away a copy of my website. I think I did a promotion where you had to guess the number of words in the book, and the person who came closest uh, I gave the copy to. It's like a hundred thousand words or something crazy. Um, there's a podcast for our industry called AV Week, Audio Visual Week. Uh, I went on there and gave away a copy on that. Um, Broadway Sound Masterclass, we have here in New York, I have to be speaking at that. Uh, last year I gave away a copy. Stage Lighting Suit, another event we do here in New York. So the thing is that um, when I, if you're with the publisher, once the book's released, the only, you can call them up or email them and say, hey, I'm speaking this event in three weeks, could you maybe give me one copy for free to give out and they'll think about it and maybe the, me, I just order it, it costs me seven dollars and then I give it away. So I keep a few copies around uh, just for that reason. Uh, and then I'm in the local one stagehands union here in New York, so to promote it in there, I gave, we have the email list, so I gave a promotion code for that. that was, I don't remember how much it was anymore, but it was below uh, it would have given you free shipping, basically, it plus a little bit off. And so any of those things just end up, uh, uh, comes out, it reduces the royalties, obviously. So I took a few ads out in some trade publications, um, the, uh, and I put a QR code on it so you could scan it and link back to it. I just put a web page on my blog that's not uh, publicly displayed, and that way you could see it. Uh, sorry, I could see it if somebody scanned the QR code and landed land on my website. So I have some metrics. It's not very sophisticated, but um, we have the Audio Engineering so Society show, which is a big target market for the book here in New York. Uh, so I bought a, uh, put an ad like this in the um, daily. They, they give out a free newspaper every day. I, there was, I don't know, 30,000 people with that thing. I got two clicks. So I don't know if it was worth it. Lightning Sound America is a trade magazine uh, that's very good in our industry. I put a couple ads in there, 28 views off of that. 
so again, I don't know who saw it, but these are the people that actually, you know, read the QR code. So, but it gives me some idea. Pro Sound News, another one. I got 18 uh, clicks off of that. Uh, I don't know that if it led to any sales. It was a small amount, but I think again, I needed to get the word out that that the book was uh, the new edition of the book was out. It's really a new book in a lot of ways, and then I was self-publishing it. So I, this was all about just sort of making an impact. Um, and I'll talk more about that. So I think it helped establish the book in the market um, to get it out. <clears throat> uh, I got some reviews. Um, some of these happen spontaneously. Uh, most of them, though, like everything else in that industry, uh, you just need to submit it. So we have a, a, um, a tra trade organization called USITT. They have a journal, and I just submitted to them. Again, it cost me 10 bucks to have it shipped to them, uh, and it shipped out. And the guy, it turned out it was a friend of mine. He never talked to me, and he gave a great review. But it was one of those really cool moments where I'm literally like sitting on the subway, flipping through the magazine, I'm like, "Oh, it's my book!" <laughs> and he, he, it was. Um, I'm glad he gave me a good review. But it was really that was a fun, that was a really fun time. Uh, Stage Directions, another magazine, Lighting Sound America also reviewed it. Um, and those things, you know, there's there's a in the trade press, there's a pretty good wall between editorial and advertising, but it certainly helps to get in their agenda if you buy an ad. So. I think it was like $900 worth of ads that I bought, so it certainly helped to get me on their radar. Academic copies, so another role of a publisher is that if you're a professor like me and you want to evaluate a book like this for your class, you can uh, ask the publisher to send you a copy for free. I just actually did this for a book for one of my sound classes, and they are now sending a like, time-limited e-book uh, instead of a print copy, so that's a new development that I just experienced recently. But for me, uh, so I just set up a form on my website, I use a little survey monkey form so you can type in all the data and then I just cut and paste that into CreateSpace uh, and then it cost me 10 bucks, maybe 12 to ship it uh, internationally. That's very slow but uh, it does go out. And I've sent out 26 copies uh, so far for that. So and the nice thing about this is I have all their email addresses so I can follow up with them and say, hey, how did that book work out? Did you end up using it in class? Was there anything that would be better? Do you need something different? Uh, and again, with a the publisher, they know exactly where all the, the, the uh, academic copies are going, but they don't tell you. So they really just, that's, that's not your job. You just write it and they handle the marketing. And I'm, obviously, in, these are small markets that uh, I know the business better than the publisher does. So uh, they don't really offer me much anymore. Oh, that's one thing. I did have a few uh, requests from England and some other places. And so sending that out through CreateSpace, the, the print-on-demand people, is great because they handle all the duty, everything. You just give them the address and it, it arrives. Uh, the cheap shipping they do is very slow, but it, it's so much better than having to deal with uh, all the, the duty stuff. If you ever try to ship stuff internationally, it's always a nightmare with that, unless you do it all the time, which I don't. Uh, Google Books search. So turns out you can join Google Books as a Google Books partner. And then basically I just made a, a PDF a special for them, uploaded it, and that was it. Then it took them a little, there's some rigmarole. It took them a while to get to it, to get it publicly released, but it's up there now. And uh, I linked back from there. There's a the way that you can link back to a sales site. So I linked back to my CreateSpace site, actually to my blog, I think, that went to that. And Google of course, is really good at analytics, as we've been hearing all weekend here. Uh, so since I put it up um, February 14th, I've had 15 buy clicks. So I don't know if that means 15 people bought it, but that means 15 people searched for something, found it in there, and then clicked on the buy link and at least thought about it. So, And that cost me nothing. So that, that's what's so great about all this stuff. Uh, just It was kind of a fun experiment. I took out some Google ads just on some search terms like show control is a thing we do a lot or show networks, these type of things that are using networking on shows. And I'd spent like a hundred bucks. I had one of those, used to get these promotions from Google like, hey, we'll give you a hundred dollars. So I tried that. I gave another hundred. It's pretty amazing when you take one of these campaigns out. I would just see this spike in traffic on my website. Um, but it's traffic all over the place, not just to the link uh, page that I was advertising. So it's kind of I had a paid direct link to my uh, book, but you just see the sort of noise would pop up the minute that campaign went live, and then when it died out, the, it would drop off again. So it's kind of fascinating with that. I think there must be some, it's got to be, when the ads come up, I think somebody must be scraping it and looking back at it and just going to these some robot or something, but it, it was interesting. Um, again, I don't have, really have a good way to track that 
metrics, but I don't think there's any big, I couldn't see any results. I mean, the, if you really wanted to spend a lot more time on this, you could figure this out, but uh, to me it was just kind of a fun thing to do. I did, uh, we have a great charity in our industry called Behind the Scenes that uh, gives money directly to people who are injured. A lot of people in our field you know, work freelance, they don't have insurance or whatever. So they will just, if you have a, uh, like a chronic illness or you're taken out of the industry, they'll just give you cash, which is great, and it's official foundation all that. So I did a promotion with them where if you bought it, again, using a specific CreateSpace code just so I could track it, then uh, I gave you a $10 discount, and then I would give $10 of the royalties uh, to behind the scenes. So I uh, sold about 50 copies, and then I rounded it up and gave them 1000 uh uh, which is fun. So the royalties end up a little, I don't know, it's around, I actually couldn't find the exact details, but uh, the number that I sold, uh, I had all this, so I just didn't get it. But So I rounded up a little bit to give them $1,000. So again, it's a nice thing. It's a great uh, charity, but also obviously it's good promotion for me because that email went out over the, all over the place. Uh, off the hook, the, uh, the radio show done by the people from 2600 who organized this conference. They are, if you, if you listen to the show, you know they're like an interminable pledge drive. They're pretty much a pledge drive like 50 weeks out of the year, it seems now, with all the problems with WBAI. Um, but I emailed Bernie and the manual and said, hey, uh, just got this book. I, I'd love to come on the show and talk about it. And I'll give away as many people uh, want to uh, uh, buy at some promotional level. So I, I don't remember, I think it was about if you donated about $100 to BAI. Uh, then you would get the book on that particular promo. So uh, 12 people did that, and then I, so to me it cost me about 100 bucks, a little less than that. Actually, it's less because it was sort of bulk packaging the BAI, and they, I hope, handled the, distri distri the distribution. If you've been listening to the show lately, there's a lot of problems with that, but I think this went out. Um, and uh, so that's a charitable donation for me, and I got to be on the radio and talk about this thing, which is really fun. Um, so I, the other thing I did, and it was really kind of this came, I got this idea because of that um, bizarre thing with Kindle not being able to offer a discount. It's either zero or 100 percent. So, and I, like I said, I really wanted to give the the ebook copy to the people who bought the print copy before the ebook was available. And I was thinking this actually has like a serial number in the back, a uh, print code. So I was thinking, oh, I'll have them rip that page out and send it. And I'm like, ah, oh, the hell with it. So I did this thing, pay what you will promotion. Um, so I promoted this for like 10 days in advance. Again, I posted a lot of industry e email lists put up on my website, of course. Um, and then what I did is I just set the discount to 100% for 48 hours. You can do all that in, uh, in uh, uh, Amazon, in the Kindle you know, management uh, page. It's a little, I remember being unclear whether it was Eastern or Pacific time, but uh, so I just opened it up for 48 hours. You, anybody could download it, and then I just had a, gave a PayPal address that if you if you want to donate something, send some money to this PayPal thing. So the coolest thing. So I had 420 people downloaded it in uh, 48 hours. 14% of those people uh, donated. So one thing I really have no metrics on what the other people are because it might just be if you're looking for free Kindle books, you just happen to stumble across this. No cost to you. Maybe you download it. But the really great thing for me is I got a lot of comments. With people would comment when they gave the PayPal or they would just email me, whatever. And I had a bunch of people said, "Hey, I just got laid off from my job." I, I'm trying to learn about this stuff. This is really great. I can't afford to give you anything, but I really appreciate it, which is really, it's really nice for me. <coughs> and a lot of students, again, oh, I just started school. I don't have money. So I, here's five bucks, you know. So that was pretty cool. Um, so 39% of the, so out of the 14% of the 420 uh, donated, so 59 people donated, 39% of them gave $10, 20% gave $20, 7% gave $30, which is the full price. 14% uh, gave $5, and two people gave me $1, which was, to me was $0.33 cents after PayPal time. So I don't really know what, 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 what I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to feel if they think it's worth a dollar. So, um, but again, a lot of the other people gave 5 bucks. said, look, you know, I have really been out of work for a while, these types of, this, these things. So it was really, it was kind of fun to get that kind of feedback. Amazingly, though, I got like 900 bucks out of that. So the per copy royalty for that, given the number that were downloaded, is about two dollars per copy, but still is nine hundred bucks. So. so the other thing I did that I don't think I could ever do this with a publisher is I made uh, lecture videos for my class at City Tech, and I actually have some City Tech students here working today. They're volunteering, which is great. 
Um, so I made these lecture videos where I literally just take my PDF of the, of the book, put it on the screen, run this Camtasia, you know, capturing software, and do the lectures I used to do at City Tech in person. I now just, I made videos for them, and I just put them online for free. And then I restructured my class so that the lecture portion, we don't meet anymore, and then the meeting part of the class, we start with a lab, we, we, we uh, clear up anything that's confusing, discuss anything, and jump into a lab. And that's been two years of that, and it's, it's really worked out great. I could ask some of the students if they, if they thought it was good. But, um, uh, I don't. I, I don't know. I have. I have tried this. I really doubt that a publisher is going to let you take a clear PDF and put it on the screen. I mean, I'm not uploading the PDF, but you certainly could. You could basically you don't need to read it if you if you watch the video. But though people learn differently. Some people are better read-write learners. Some people are better uh, hearing it. Some people are better watching it. And then I also put a lot of supplemental stuff in there. Um, I would say that this will probably end up making get taken down. But one thing, it's all on Vimeo. So I, sometimes I actually went on the screen and I actually run YouTube videos of things related to the content, captured that, put on Vimeo, and I've never gotten a DMCA takedown notice or anything for it. I mean, it's legitimate fair use. I mean, it's literally a class lecture. I link back to the you know the original video. If I could embed the link in the in the Vimeo uh, video, I would. Again, I can't imagine. The, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but the, I don't imagine my old publisher would have allowed that and they control the distribution rights, so I would not be allowed to do it legally without asking them. So some of the videos have hundreds of plays. I haven't had hundreds of students come through since we've uh, done this, so that means there are a few, there's some people watching it, uh, other chapters um, uh, that, are, that uh, were not students. So it's definitely getting around a little bit. So the results. Um, so I debated whether to just tell the number of copies or whatever. I so, said, ah, the hell would I just put all the, I just put exactly what I made up there. So um, first edition, 1994 to 2000, sold 2,700 co copies, about 2,700 copies. It's about $6,000 in royalties spread over six years. So get a check for six, 800 bucks every year. Royalty for that, uh, about $2.35 per copy. And then what I did is I, I figured it took about 400 hours to do each edition of the book. I honestly, back when I wrote this, I intentionally did not track my time because I didn't want to know because I really didn't think it was going to be worth it uh, financially. So about $16 an hour to do the first edition, which really isn't worth it. I can go work as a local one stagehand, even in 1994, make better money than that. But that's not the reason you do it. I mean, obviously the, the money is nice, it covers things, but the, it's really about this. Is about, it, definitely I got other value in terms of being asked to speak at conferences. I wouldn't be speaking here if it wasn't for that. This is not going to make me any money, but, um, but it gets a lot of exposure. And it helped in my academic career, having a book published, certainly. Second edition, 2,500, 2,600 copies, about $21 an hour for that, $3 copy royalties. Third edition, about 2,200 uh, copies. So the sales were kind of declining there in that way, but again, this third edition, I think the publisher really didn't, they, they did virtually nothing to market it. Um, royalties were about, about $8,500. Reading all these numbers in case people are listening just on audio here. About $4 a copy uh, for royalties and about $21 an hour. So. Over the life of that three editions of that book, it was between 16 and 21 dollars per hour, given inflation and all that. It's about rough calculation what uh, I was making to write the book. So again, it's fun. I enjoy it. I like the process and I like the result, and it's really fun to do it. I, financially, uh, it's probably not. If that, you're trying to make a living that way, it's pretty hard. Interesting. So the total royalties over three editions was about 23,000 dollars. But of course, that's 10%, so that means over that time, the publisher took in about $233,000 uh, during that time. <clears throat> and obviously, I'm not paying for warehousing and all that kind of stuff. I'm sorry, could... Um, yeah, it would, well, the advance, it basically just, did, uh, uh, it's a good question, actually. If you get a $1,000 advance and you make $6,000 in royalties, it just means it's literally an advance. So you get that $1,000 and you won't even get royalties for like the first year or whatever and then you'll get $5,300 later. That's the whole scam of the record companies where they would advance these artists uh, you know, to, to make a record and then they'd charge all these expenses against and they'd never get any more money. But in this case, it's just per copy royalty. So the royalties are just, I mean, sorry, the advance would just be rolled into that number. So for self-published sales, so, and it was really kind of interesting because I just added all these numbers up last week. Um, so I sold on uh, about 
1,030 copies of the print edition. Um, 700 of those were on Amazon. The e My eStore was 237. And then this expanded distribution is 90, so that's about whatever number went to the bookstore. That gave me $25,000 in royalties, which is kind of amazing because this money just keeps coming in. I'm like, wow, it's just direct deposits in my account. It's pretty cool. So the royalty per copy on average there is about $24. And, I'll, uh, and so comparing that to publisher royalty, so it's about 2 $3 per copy under the publisher and $24 per copy under self-publishing. So the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. And eventually when they get the, I guess they're going to talk streaming. I don't know if they're going to archive it, but if not, I'll put all these slides up uh, against the audio. So I did some wholesale print sales because there's some, some small uh, sort of online booksellers in our market that uh, uh, really kind of curate books and they want to sell it or a uh, union in Los Angeles wanted to buy a bunch of copies, things like that. So with that, I can buy the copies from CreateSpace at a $6.75 a piece plus shipping and I can do whatever I want with them. I can give them away like today. I can sell them to them. So I sell them to them at 40% off, which is that standard sort of wholesale price. And then they can resell it or they can give it to their union members or whatever. So I sold 150 copies that way. Uh, it's interesting, I, when I calculated all the shipping expense and all the other things involved in that, it, it, the average royalty for that was about $23 again, so it's in that same ballpark. So again, that first number, 2392, is an average between if you buy it from the e-store, I get more. If you buy it from Amazon, you get less. If you buy it from expanded distribution, I get even less. So that's the average altogether. So Kindle copies, though, this was kind of interesting because I just get these reports and I never told it up. Like I said, it was a pain in the ass. 144 copies. So. Uh, maybe I undersold it in terms of, like, hey, it's, it's not as good as the print version or whatever, but I also just think that it's, we're just not there yet in terms of the uh, e-books. I mean, I read, if it's a, like a novel, I'm happy to read on an e-book. If it's a technical book, I still want to read it in print. Uh, so I'm still going to look into this PDF. Water, what I want is individually watermarked PDFs, and it looks like that's possible now, so I'll look at that, and I might, if that works, I might just kill the Kindle edition on it. So that pay what you will version uh, uh, promotion was 420 copies, made about $894, and the royalty for that at $2.13 because obviously 80 some percent of people didn't pay anything. So uh, and I literally didn't know this number until like Friday. Um, 1,744 copies in since the Hope Number Nine until now because just coincidentally it had to be released on that. So in two years it sold 1,744 copies about thir over $30,000 in total royalties. And because it's been coming in every month, I, I honestly never told this up. And I haven't, I'll show you the expenses in a minute. Um, but so that's on track. So 1,700 copies over two years is actually on track with the sales under the publisher. Uh, and I'll talk about this. I'm in a unique situation um, in terms of the, I already had an existing product and so on, but uh, I get through some of this before I run out of time. So expenses for me, so out of pocket, so I'm not including uh, office expense, things like that, because it just would get crazy. Um, but this was the same as when I was writing the book for the publisher, so I would need a desk and a computer and that kind of stuff. I needed that then, I need that now, so I'm not really counting that. So the expenses between copy editing, all that kind of stuff, ISBN, um, there's a few setup charges, a couple hundred dollars of setup charges, which is really pretty minimal. Uh, you have to pay for a few things here and there. So it, and the advertisements and some new business cards and stuff like that promotional copies, roughly about $6,000, uh, sort of the promotional cost and the sort of production and promotional cost. So you take 30, about $31,000 to subtract of total income, subtract uh, $6,000 off of that. Total gross profits about $25,000. Um, and so the hourly wage based on that, comparing again the same sort of structure to the publisher is about $49 an hour. So now you're talking about it is worth it to do it if, if you can get these kind of sales numbers. Uh, it's a lot better than 15, 20, things like that. That's actually well below my consulting rate, so if you hire me to consult on a sound system or something, I'm going to charge more than that. Uh, but if you guaranteed me 500 hours worth of work, I might negotiate that down. Oh, and I increased the number here because all that promotional marketing stuff, you have to factor that in. So that's not including taxes, home office expense. I took a 20% 20, 20 pay cut 
to take a half a year sabbatical for my school, so that's all lost. And I'm not factoring all that in, but it's it's sort of to try to compare apples and apples. So yeah, the self-published about $49. And of course, this rate, if I don't uh, do a big update, this rate just keeps going up if, as more sales come in. So two more years, actually, the effective rate would go up. But about $50 an hour to self-publish, and roughly $20 an hour under the publisher. So, and the, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, to summarize that, the benefits to me, so my situation is unique. I already had three editions of a book in the market. That's not going to uh, translate necessarily to a lot of other people starting out. That's not us speeding back. Um, but on this one edition, I've made more than all three copies previous combined under the publisher. That's, again, and I really wasn't uh, my goal or anything really. I mean, of course, I like making money, but that wasn't the, the objective. All I remember all I started out to do was cover my expenses and keep the thing going. And it, it went way better than that. Talk about that. And the, the greatest thing, though, is just that to me, I have a lot more engagement with the readers, which is really great, rather than just somebody, you screwed this up, or, or some uh, typo that I got. Another very cool thing with CreateSpace is if I wanted to spend the time right now, uh, there's a few typos in there that people have found. I have an errata page on my website. Um, but if I wanted to add a chapter today, I could go write it. I just upload a new PDF to CreateSpace, and then the next one that's ordered would be printed with the new edition. So that's pretty cool. So you don't have to wait and go talk to the publisher. And then the, so, so far, there hasn't been anything sort of dramatic changes in terms of that. I kind of anticipated most of the things. But there's a, there's a few typos. There's some tables that didn't set right and things like that. So I might update that at some point. That would probably be version 1.01. .01. But if a new technology came out today and I want to add a chapter, I can just go add a chapter. And then I would I have to get the word out, and I would probably just post that chapter or PDF on my website for people who already have the book and stuff like that. But so far, that hasn't come up yet. And the biggest thing I think has really been it's really been fun the whole process. I mean, it's a lot of work writing a book, a huge amount of work. But the marketing and promotion and that kind of stuff was for me uh, was was made it a lot more fun because you get that feedback about it, because a lot of times you're just staring at the computer, send it to the publisher, a year later it gets printed, then somebody tells you they saw it, and then, you know, so it's, so that way you're interacting with these, like, contests and promotional stuff, and the pay what you will promotion and so on was really, I had a lot more engagement with the readers, which is really great. So, is it right for you? Um, so I would say the role of a good publisher today would be, first, they really need to find, develop, and service a market, right? They need to understand a market, and they need to have credibility in that market. Uh, they need to have a strong identity. So I always think of O'Reilly as a good example of this. If you buy an O'Reilly book, you know, obviously things can get through the system, but for the most part, you know that it's a, it's a quality book on a topic that's relevant and so on. Um, credibility, I've mentioned that before, again, O'Reilly. Uh, and a very interesting thing from the academic side is I, I had already, I'm already full professor, so um, I, the self-published edition of this, I didn't have to go argue with people about promotion and tenure with that. That's going to be very interesting to see how that works out, because I know in my school, they're already looking at us entertainment people weird because uh, we don't have peer-reviewed journals and so on. So I don't know how you can, I mean, I could, I think I could make a good case. I've sold X copies, I've been on, was on off the hook, you know, whatever, things like that. Uh, but it'd be interesting. So if somebody does that with a self-published book, I'd love to hear how that went. Because uh, one thing, it's a publisher, if it's a known publisher, then that gives you sort of a stamp of approval, uh, external, you know, acclamation, is, that's really important. So the other thing a publisher really should do is make it easy for authors, um, and I really think they should engage the authors in sales and marketing, and my publisher did, never did that. They just sort of like, you send, literally you send in this, like, why are we sending in a PDF? It comes out, and then you get a check once a year. That's one other thing with the... Uh, self-publishing and through CreateSpace, you get a monthly royalty, where with the publisher, you get one check a year in about March, and you get this really terse statement with all these returns and all this crap. Uh, so with this, the money comes in as it's sold. So I think the publishers that aren't doing these things aren't really having a strong identity, really developing the market. They really should see self-publishing as a threat because Honestly, the last edition of my publisher, the CreateSpace, actually offered me more, and I made a lot more money from that. So I, I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't go backwards. In fact, I have friends with the same publisher now that are thinking about new editions, and I've been telling them, like, hey, you should just do that. Because we do all the work anyway. So if you're willing to do the promotional stuff part, then um, uh, why not? So problems with my publisher, as I said, they complain about the sales, but the marketing is terrible. The academic policy cut me out of the loop. 
royalties are confusing. One other thing that's really awful is they lost, uh, I never, I sent them a PDF that has print marks on it and all that stuff. They lost a copy of that, uh, and they would actually distribute ebooks uh, as just raw, clean PDF. So they're all over the web. So you go up, if you search for my, the previous edition of my book, you'll find 12 illicit copies up there, and of course you have to download some Romanian porn spam to get to that page, but, uh, but it's up there. So I've had students bring those things in before. And I'm like, really? Thanks, you know. Um, and that I didn't lose that. That was them. So on this edition, I know where it went. There's there's two clean three clean PDF copies released. Anybody I would send it to to review or whatever, it has watermark. Um, I sent one to Create Space, clean, because obviously you have to print it without a watermark. Uh, one to uh, Kindle, which is actually EPUB format, and one to Google. That's it for the book search. And I, I honestly don't search anymore because it just gets too upsetting. But as far as I know, I haven't seen any versions pop up. Uh, obviously, any DRM can be broken, anything like that. But it's it generally you just don't want. If you have a clean PDF, that's what my publisher did. Uh, and as far as I know, they're still doing that. And then what really pissed me off, I had to find the pirated copies. I have a, I had a Google search just set up for the title of my book, and it would come up, download Control System Live Entertainment for free. And I'm like, God. So I would go look at it. And then, it, uh, then I would have to send it. So at first, when I actually issued a DMCA to the people, and then the next one, I emailed the publisher. I'm like, "What are you guys doing?" And it turns out they have a whole division that will go after these people, but they I mean, don't, don't search for anything. So I had to send them. So what the hell good are they? Um, their people don't understand the content. That was a big problem with a layout. I mean, again, graphics—they're doing a great job on the graphics layout. They're just just not their topic. And then the funny thing is, they agreed to stop publishing it. June 30th or whatever in 2012, they kept publishing it. So, uh, and I just got to check this year for ebook royalties of some package they sold to a library, whatever. Like, you gotta be kidding me. So, the first time though, they kept selling the old edition, which is really obsolete, through the royalty period of 2013. And so, I, again, I had to call them up and say, What the hell are you doing? Why is this still out there? You, I have a contract from you that says you will stop selling on June 30th. So, it just gets lost in the bureaucracy. Publisher got sold, and the other thing dealing with the publisher uh, with three editions of this book over since 1994, I never dealt. I don't think I sent an email to the same person more than two years in a row. So every time it's like a revolving door because these are people interested in publishing and like publishing weird technical books. It's not what they, you know, was their dream. So they're not going to stay there very long. Great people, but again, it's just every time. What? Who are you? And then the funny thing is actually that publisher just sent me a book proposal to review. And then started out, I'm not from, sure if you're familiar with this publishing company. I'm like, I emailed back, yes, and you actually published my book, uh, three editions of that. <laughs> so um, to do this for yourself today, CreateSpace, I've really had a great experience with them. I, I you know, uh, they're part of Amazon, they have issues with Amazon, but they really did a great job. And they print the, the books in South Carolina, uh, and the, uh, they ship them out. They have another printer somewhere in Europe once you like enable that so they don't have to ship it over there. Usually they beat whatever deadline. If they say it's going to be here next Thursday, it comes on Tuesday. They've really been great with them. The upfront cost, I mean, I had some more because it's a big book. I don't, it's about 400 pages and lots of words, so the copy editing costs a little bit more and stuff like that. But the actual setup costs in CreateSpace are really low. It's probably a couple hundred bucks total you could get something out there. Uh, again, if you lay out and all that, it uh, would be more. Um, I had no... As far as I know, there's no interference with creating. They don't care what the content is. I don't know if I publish something really, uh, you know, racist or horrible or whatever. If they have complaints or something like that, but uh, I mean, I I never had a word from them about the content of the book. So if you want to publish something, um, I certainly wouldn't be anonymous. But if you had a self-publishing book you wanted to do, you can just do it. That's actually, in some ways, writing obviously is hard. Getting it onto their system is pretty easy. Then the, the hardest part is getting the word out. Because when you look around on there, there are hundreds of, you know, thousands of two-dollar e-books up there, fan fiction, whatever uh, uh, stuff. So getting your your um, uh, content, you know, out of the noise is the hard part. But they'll do everything for you. You just got to pay for it if you want it. Um, the other thing, it's a little hard to, to get experience because you're the first time through the process is when you're releasing it. So if you make a mistake, uh, you're kind of in it at that point. But we're hackers, right? So we're good at figuring these things out. Uh, I think all, almost every step of the way, I had an ability to test the, whatever it was before it went out for real. So even the final uh, copy, like I said, I got a proof copy 
before I click the release button on there. And uh, don't have to do that, but it, it was good to do. So what I would do today, if I was starting from scratch, I would start a blog, which I already have, um, because, um, and then keep control of it, even, you know, whatever, Tumblr, Facebook, whatever, I still would put it on my own thing that I own uh, and keep linking back to it. Um, I, I, know, I still read a lot of blogs. Every, every year there's another opinion piece about how blogs are dead, but like I said, I still have like 28,000 people coming to mind for various reasons. Work, but I actually did work out new material for this edition on the blog, which is great. I got some feedback from that. And I'm just able to go through that process and have a deadline and all that stuff was very helpful for me. Build the audience. You know your audience pretty well for these things. Uh, here, this is an audience if you're writing computer books, whatever, right here. There's a good, you know, uh, not to say that's easy, but you, again, you probably know more about it than the publisher. And you're going to be up there on Amazon the same way any book from any publisher is. So if you can get, it's in, it's in the system. Talk about that. Okay. Questions. Yeah, and that's a good question. The question was, did the sales increase? Because obviously, I'm whatever the listenership of the radio show is listening to it. Uh, I, I, nothing dramatic. I, I should actually go back and look because you can plot all that out. But it's kind of a niche book, and I don't. It's a general, more general audience, so I would doubt it. But it's a good. I could check it out. Second question, if you don't mind. Um, so last May, I was at Book Expo at uh, Javits and Hunts, I'm coming out with a new book. Thirty percent. <laughs> oh, if it's under it's two dollars, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'd probably have to talk to you more about what your market is, because that's the really. If you can reach the audience, then you should cut every. You can cut everybody out. But there's certainly a convenience with Kindle where it gets into your. They manage that. They make that very easy. So if you want to talk to me afterwards, I have to talk about that uh, in the back. Great presentation. Oh, thank you. Oh, and, yeah, if you, I forgot to put in the presentation, but if you, I have a link from my webpage. If you email me, I can send you the link. There's a, I just, I'm drawing a total blank on the name of the company right now, but there's a company now that will take a PDF that you upload, and they will sell it, handle the credit card transaction, blah, 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 and then each time they will generate a code and put some name on there. Uh, supposedly, and I literally just found this like last week. Uh, yeah, it's not the one that I had, but yeah, it's, it's quite possible. So if you email me, I can send you the link. I just forgot to put it in there. So. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a good question. The, the question was the Amazon and the Kindle stuff. There's a, it's a really complicated thing. Everything in Kindle is complicated. The, the printed thing was so much easier. Um, but every, in Kindle, they, there's an exclusive pricing arrangement. You're not allowed to undersell it anywhere else. But I'm only selling electronically on Kindle, so I don't, I don't have that problem. But yeah, paper is separate. Yeah. Right. I, and I probably could charge $20. I don't, I don't think they could do anything about it yet. That's a good question. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Kindle Direct is called. Yeah, so right now I'm on that. But I, if I if I figure out this PDF thing, I would probably just kill the pin, Kindle edition altogether and just sell it directly on my website, probably for less money, and it would just go directly. So. Yeah, I just had it on my web page. Well, no, I, mean, I never said it was free. It's pay what you will. So if you want to pay zero, that's that's up to you. 
No, because it, under the it's the Amazon promotion, it's like time limited thing where it's zero. It's very complicated when you're allowed to do that and all that. But so you that was through Amazon was to have it the price set to zero for 48 hours. Uh, yeah, it's, I never didn't ask, so that's a good question. Yeah, it's possible that might. I don't. I don't know. It's a good question. I didn't ask, and they didn't. They didn't say anything. So I think we're out of time, but we'll draw this book. Okay, I ran that one. I'm not looking here. That seems good. Let's see. Oh, SRR Swami Steve. Who's that? Oh, great. Great. Well, Sri, I'm sorry. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs>